welcome everyone to our impromptu Facebook Live today. Uh, we're doing it impromptu because we came in and uh, we've been watching these guys emerge from their cocoons all morning and they were ready to go. They're ready to get released. So we're going to tag them and release them today. Um, we've got Keeper Grace and Keeper Eric here today. And we're going to pull out a butterfly. See if I can open the door and get a butterfly without letting them all go. They are ready. I don't want to knock the other. We've got, I don't know if you guys can see, we've got this guy. Can you see him in there? Yep. He'll probably get ready. So they're that dark green color. So oh, let me back up. They've been in here for about 10 to 14 days and they make this beautiful green and gold cocoon. And then once they are about ready, so when we came in this morning, um, these five butterflies, I knew they were going to emerge today or tomorrow because their cocoons were nice and clear. Let's see if I can pull one of these off. I want to pull it off without flattening it. There we go. So they made this, that web-like material, stuck it to the top, and then this cocoon became clear this morning when he was ready to emerge. I should say she. The ones that I've looked at so far are all girls, and we'll show you how to tell them apart. So let's see if I can grab a butterfly. So when I grab a butterfly like this, I'm just gently pinching her wings together so that she can't fly. And then we're going to gently grab her abdomen and open the wings up to check if it is a boy or a girl. And this one is a girl. How do you know? So the boys, we'll see if we have any boys. The boys will have on the inside of their wings, the boys will have a little oval shape on that, that, uh, I've got a picture on here. Here we go. So the boys have these little pouches below their distal cell and their distal cell is this large mitten looking. Ooh, there it is. This large mitten looking cell right here. That's their distal cell. And that's where we're going to place the tag as well. So we're going to flip this girl around. And then let go, let go. She's got sticky feet. All right. So, and we participate in the Monarch Watch. So these itsy bitsy little tags, they're tiny little stickers. And we are going to, I got to find my toothpick I just grabbed. So that goes right on her dissel. This I can't speak. It's a good day to do a keeper chat. <laughs> so I like to use a toothpick. I find it's easier. So we're going to stick that right on her distal cell. Just like that. I can roll the toothpick out, maybe. I'm doing it oh so gently to not make sure that's firmly pressed on her cell, on their wing. So it's a super thin sticker, but that will stick to that wing because these are the monarchs that will migrate all the way to Mexico to breed or to overwinter, sorry. All right, so then we need to make sure we have all the information we need for her. So this is, I'm gonna make sure I got my she is 027 as my thing flies away. If you're uh, watching one of these for the first time, throw out your questions. We'll be happy to answer them. It's the 13th today. It is 2020. She is a female because there were no pouches. She was a wild caught. And we are in Bloomington. Illinois. I can do all this later, but sorry. Right. U.S. So why are we recording all this information and so putting stickers on them and everything? We, um, so this is through the University of Kansas, through the Monarch Watch. Let's let her go. Ready? Let's see if she flies away. 
just gonna chill here for a minute. So this is through the University of Kansas. So like I said, these guys are the butterflies that migrate all the way to Mexico and overwinter down there. So, so they have these numbers on here. So as soon as I, whoo, in my ear. Um, and so as soon as we are done with Monarch season, I will go online and send them all of our information. And then Monarch Watch is really cool in that they can, if they find the, like one of our butterflies with our tag, they will contact you. Um, but it's research to show them how monarchs migrate, migrate to yeah. Mexico and where they're spending their time. Because they're finding like that this monarch's great great grandmother went to a specific tree in Mexico or southern Texas or southern California and she will go find that same tree. It's very interesting. I mean, your mom wants to know if they find a, a butterfly with a sticker, what should they do? So it's right on the sticker. It's monarch. It's ooh, she, here. We can look at one of these. So there's a website on here. It's monarchwatch, wmtag.org. And then you type in those numbers for them to be able to track. So you go in and you say, I found this butterfly on this plant or this place. So anywhere south of us, yeah. probably. Monarchs are starting to make their way south now. This is their ideal weather, like 60s, low 70s. They'll start the migration south. She doesn't want to leave. We're going to set her right on top so we can do the other butterflies. Um, let's see. While we're doing that, Isaac had a question. He wants to know how heavy the butterflies are. Not very heavy at all. Lighter than a piece of paper. Oop, there she goes. I lost her. So hopefully she goes over to our butterfly garden. Oh, that works too. I don't. She's on the edge of the... Do you see her? I do not. She landed right there. there. She she's resting. She's getting her... That was, a, that was the farthest she's ever flown before. <laughs> she's got to build up those flight muscles. Your mom wants to know how they know whose great granddaughter it was. Remember, we were talking about. Right. They, they, we don't really know. They think that there's something in their genetics that kind of tells them where to migrate to. But we'll know that all of the butterflies from Bloomington go to a similar spot every year in Mexico. So there it is. Let's open the wings up to see if it's a boy or a girl. We've got another girl. No. She says, excuse me. Where'd my toothpick go? So combination butterfly, butterfly release and gender reveal party. <laughs> Promise not to set anything on fire. That's what I was about to say. A safe, a safe gender reveal party. Those have been the best memes the past uh, few days <laughs> for your gender reveal explosions. There we go. So I'm going to double check my numbers that I'm picking stickers in order and that we have another female. Yeah. She's too fast so you for can me. See, right. You can see those stickers don't hinder them at all. They have specifically designed those stickers so that they don't bother the, the butterfly on its migration. Looks like another girl. Oh my goodness. Wow, I don't think I've ever had this many girls before. It's like Butterfly okay. Lilith Fair or something. <laughs> it 
So these butterflies came from three different locations, right? Yeah, yes. One was here at the zoo in our butterfly yeah. garden. One was at Grace's house. Yep, I pulled them off the milkweed from she my yard. planted milkweed. And then a third was from our volunteer, Cindy, who has milkweed and stuff in her yard. So... Today. Yep. So we've got uh, two more chrysalises that should be out tomorrow. Three more? Three more? Okay, three more. Yeah, this I should don't be. know that that one's going to emerge tomorrow. I bet those two are going to emerge We have two, two that'll come tomorrow. We'll get a good look at the, the chrysalis. Hold on to my finger. Boy or girl? <gasps> it's a boy! So there, there you can go. see the difference. Those little black. Those little pouches there. Black right there. So this one's a boy. Alright. That's good. Yay! Wait, you have to come to my left hand. I am right hand dominant, sir. I need to pick up your... Alright, 30 starts up here. I think, uh, what are we going to release today? Five? Yes. Okay. Yeah, five emerged Five. Five we're going to release today. So, so we had a bunch of caterpillars, but some of them just... Yeah, it hasn't been a good... Died right away. It hasn't been a good caterpillar year, I've read. Let go. Alright, make sure that sticker's on him. Alright, we've got number 30. There he goes. Oh, wrong way, dude. I lost him. Oh, he's sitting was, on the ground. Oh, he's sitting on the ground. He's resting. Let's go. Get him off the ground. Son of a... It, it figures that the girls all took off and knew what they were doing, and he just kind of... he's like, ooh! ...crash landed, huh? <laughs> Who wants to guess, boy or girl? You got a 50-50 chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tag him while people's guesses come in. Okay. Him or her. That was a gender neutral. <laughs> that wasn't a... It. An it. I will tag it while guesses come in. This one's little. Zero, three, one. All right, Nikki says girl, Amanda says boy. It is a... It's a girl. It's a girl. Boy. Mm. Nikki was right. So yeah, like I said, these guys are like, what would it be, like third generation breeding here? So the monarchs that have been here all summer, they just continually breed. And then these guys have the longest lifespan. They will migrate all the way down to Mexico or that area. Some of them make it to like Texas and stop, California and stop. Hopefully the smoke from California does not affect their migration too much. I bet it will have some effects though. Yeah, these guys have really good internal 
know, compass is the right word. Yeah. But uh, they uh, they they a lot of the birds will fly like at night even. They they don't even need right. light. They just have like an electromagnetic sensor, I guess, in their head right. to know which way is south, and they just keep flying and all the way to central Mexico. Uh, Nikki says she's got two at home in Chrysalis right now. Oh, that's exciting. It's pretty sweet. And Allie just joined. She wants to know why we're putting stickers on them. So we put stickers on them because these are the monarchs that will migrate all the way down south to Mexico, California, Texas, that area. And they will overwinter down there. And so you can, if you find a butterfly with a sticker like that on there, there she is. Ooh. She doesn't want to show it off. I'll get, it. I'll get a different one. Yeah. Here you can see the stickers on their sheets still. So. Oops. So if you find a monarch with there, you can log on to the Monarch Watch website. And oh, there she goes. <laughs> off to the butterfly garden. Um, they have individual numbers and letters. That is their special ID. And that way we can track okay this caterpillar um cocooned from illinois and they made it down to southern texas um they're finding now that they are tracing specific butterflies they're finding that butterflies of the same like this guy's great 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 grandmother three generations they're usually about three generations a summer so like this guy's great great grandmother went to the same tree and if he's able to make it all the way to Mexico he will go to that same tree and they've only been able to, to find that out by doing these tags like this so they're finding out the researchers are finding out some really interesting things about monarch migration and monarch population um, with, through these tagging programs it's real funny. It seems like the population's cyclical. Like one year they'll have a really low year. There's hardly any down in Mexico. Right. And then the next year they'll have a ton. So there's some sort of environmental factors up here in um, the Midwest and everywhere that affects how many make it down to Mexico from year to year. Yeah. Uh, but they have noticed a decrease over time. City bus going by. Yes. Yeah, so this is why, to help these guys, if you want to help monarchs, um, you can plant milkweed. I know a lot of people consider it a weed, um, but there are so many pollinators and bugs and stuff that that rely on... That's not a bug. I don't know what that was. It was a big old bug. Yeah. Um, that rely on milkweed. Ooh, another fun fact that I've learned about monarch is because they... They feed primarily on that milkweed, that common milkweed, as caterpillars that they've built up a toxicity. And so now he, him as a, as, a caterp as a caterpillar, words, ate so much milkweed that he's, got, he's built up that toxin in his body. And so over time, birds have learned to not eat monarchs because they don't taste good, they make them sick. Um, and funnily, I forget what species it is, but there are a couple other butterflies that look similar to monarchs. Um, and it's believed they've kind of developed like that because they're kind of trying to mimic monarchs and so birds won't eat them. All right. Uh, ben wants to know how long it takes them to migrate. Um, it takes them, that's a good question. I used to know this, what is it? It's not very long, it's a couple weeks. Like they'll be down there by the end of October, I think. For a butterfly, you for know. For a butterfly, it's not that long. <laughs> it, it, it is, if you think about it, I wonder if my little cheat sheet tells me. I will, I will look. Oh, this, this tells me they have an average pace of 25 to 30 miles a day, which is pretty impressive for an insect that size. Yeah. Um... Can anybody do the tags? Can anybody be a part of this Monarch Watch program? Yes, anybody can do this. Um, I know several people that do this kind of just in their home with their kids. Um, go to monarchwatch.org, I think is the one that, that we've gone through. Um, 
And so that you can order the tags online and you will get this sheet that looks just like this with your little tags, stickers, and you document all your information and then go back onto their website and log all that information for them. But Monarch Watch is a great resource if you want to get into helping monarchs out. And also this is why, uh, especially if you live along the monarch migration path, um, in this area, it's kind of along the Mississippi, down, down to Mexico and Mex uh, Texas and Mexico, is to plant those pollinators, pol yeah, pollinator plants that they like. And don't use pesticides. Right. <laughs> Milkweed is a butterfly's friend. Yes. And they started eradicating it all along the highways and the edges of fields and things like that. Yeah. And it's really important for the, the pollinators. Yeah, it's really important for you. You're just going to chill here? You want me to take you into the butterfly garden? We have one more question, I thought. Sure. Oh, uh, Amanda one. wants to know, does the ACBU stand for something or is it just... No, it's just the... Random it's, letters. It's just the random letters that we got on our tags this year. Um, what I think this is the third, third or fourth year that we've done tagging we've tagged monarchs and they're different numbers every time i think some of them may correlate to like the region or something like that but i've gotten different different letters every time let's take him put over him out. The, i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna help him out a little right, bit we're gonna put him on and then we'll say goodbye we're gonna go put him on a on some flowers are out in our butterfly garden to help him out a little bit Alex is watching. She says we're doing a good job. Thanks, Alex. Alex hasn't been out in a while. She needs to come see us. Yeah. Let's pick him up here. Right next to a bumblebee. Don't sting me, bumblebee. You want to go up on that flower? Oh, he says yes, please. There you go. It's a big bumblebee, isn't it? I wonder if it's... Is it one of our bees? No, it's too big. We have. Oh, we have honeybees, not bumblebees. Yeah. I'm not a bee person. Can you tell? Bees and I don't get along. <laughs> I know they're important. We have a healthy respect for each other. <laughs> Anybody else fun in the pond? You can kind of let's, yeah, you can just kind of see the movement. I don't spend too much time doing it, but you can just see the bugs yeah, there's buzzing bees around. Bees everywhere. Super important. Lots of bees. Lots of little moths. How many years have we done this? Four or five, something like that. The butterfly garden or the monarch? The monarch watch. The monarch watch, I think this is year three or four. So. I think four. There's a ton of them everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm not out today. Oh, oh Benny's gone. There's another one up here I just saw. Oh, there's another one up by our butterfly friend. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time. <laughs>